to another Mr. Beast Fight video. And this one's a little bit different insofar as we're looking at a Sony F30 with a tuner fault. And uh, you may be thinking, well, a tuner fault, why fix that? That's because on the F30, if there is a problem with the um, logic board or the, the board that controls the tuning, um, not only can you not select any um, channels, not only can you not auto program, select anything on the top, but you can't put it to uh, AB in, which is actually quite useful to do if you want to do some recordings to Betamax. And I know quite a lot of people like to do that just for the retro uh, experience of watching back um, a Betamax recording. So uh, yeah, this could be a short video or it could be a very long video, but uh, to be honest, what I usually do is if I have a scrap machine, um, I'll take the board out, just swap the board over. It doesn't matter. I'm not not worried about the um, the RF side of things really working. As long as the chip itself that controls um, the buttons for the tuning and ultimately the input select work, then I'm happy. So with that, let's crack on and see what's going on. I have found a board. Uh, whether it's any good, I don't know, but um, we'll swap it out and uh, you can see this one is a little less uh, tidy than the, uh, the board that's already in there, but it's it's fine. It's, it's not a problem. Uh, as long as it works, that's cool. And uh, yeah, so let's swap it out and see how we get on. So first thing. Turn the power off to it, because <laughs> that's always a good idea. And let's just take these screws out. First of all, and pull somewhat unceremoniously the connectors. really pull them up by the plastic, not by the cables like I am. It does strain them. I am doing it gently. <laughs> I do really help, hope this is all that um, need is just changing this um, this board, and that's enough. Uh, the other board is actually good enough to do the trick. So I will change the cans because the cans on this board are nice can lids. So these plastic hinges will squeeze the two bits of plastic together so they pop off. And that was actually quite easy to do. But on the other one, <laughs> it was really difficult because it was buried. And you can sort of get in there to get at the, uh, get at the board. So. Yeah, it's actually really easy to do that. Just put that phone on the CA connector in. So like I say, this could be a very short video a really long video because if this doesn't work I haven't I don't think I've got another board so I'm gonna have to try and fix the uh, 
one or other of these boards to get this uh, get this up and running properly so you can actually make a recording. Um, such a pain. So there we go. Uh, I know the voltages are good. Um, I uh, probably should have shown that, but um, the power supply has already been rebuilt and tested, so um, that was actually on a previous video, so yes, it's one of those machines where I did a lot of work to get it up together, uh, only to then find what the original fault was with the machine. So I suppose we better test it. So let's power it on and immediately, I mean, it's the same program too, so that's a good start. Uh, let's turn it on. Yeah, it's great. Super fantastic. Phew. So, uh, yeah, just changing that board's done the trick. Now, I do wonder what is wrong with this board. Um, I will say I've done a couple of these. Uh, the last one I did was actually a, a C9. Um, they use these Mitsubishi-based um, processors, um, sort of tuning control, um, logic for the tuning, input select, whatever. And um, I changed it on a C9, and I think, I think I actually did a video on it. And it worked perfectly. It was absolutely brilliant for about two weeks. And then it failed again. So in the end, I changed the whole board and it was fine, which is really, you know, it's not the way I like to do things. I like to actually find out why something is um, causing an issue. But <laughs> yeah, it's a tuning section. <laughs> so yeah, I'm happy to, to sort of go with the... Um, go with the board replacement and in this case it it really makes very little difference all i actually want to be able to do is just select um the av in and the tuning section pretty much is redundant anyway but uh yeah maybe in a future video we'll look at why um why these keep popping um uh, i mean this is the third one out of probably a hundred or so machines i've looked at really weird and uh yeah obviously there is something i mean they're dealing with quite high voltages as well it's sort of like 33 volts the tuning and um yeah so with that thank you very much for watching and see you in another video bye for now